Our family loves our chips and salsa, but we really love this peach salsa. We're going to show you step by step on how we make this and how we do can it for later. And you can see all the list of ingredients right in the description after the video. Most of these cherry tomatoes here that you see were grown using our Aero Garden, uh, which is a nice hydroponic system. And the plum tomatoes are from our garden. We're going to chop up five cups of these tomatoes, which is perfect for canning three jars of this peach salsa. And all the ingredients after this point have been scaled based upon the number of tomatoes that we do have. Man, those look beautiful. All right, here's our five cups of tomatoes chopped nicely, and we're adding those right into our large pot. All right, now where did we put those yellow onions? Ha, ah, there they are. So we're going to chop up one and a half large yellow onions here. First cutting off that outer skin there, then we get to all the good stuff. Then we can cut this in half, and we'll grab our second onion and do the same. Perfect. Now we're going to cut these down to even quarters here. And since we're going to be dicing these, we're going to pull out one of Julie's favorite tools here uh, for some quick and easy dicing of the onions. Just look how nice those get diced. Pretty cool. There you go. One and a half diced yellow onions right into our large pot. Looking good. All right, here we're going to grab our two green peppers, cut those open, and kind of clean those up a little bit. These do get diced up as well, but Julie likes to clean these out a little bit before she does the dicing. Uh, so it's all the good pepper in there uh, into the mixture. And as we watch Julie do her work here, maybe this is a great time to click that subscribe button for other videos like this. We appreciate it. And once we get these peppers nice and cleaned up and chopped down to a small size here, it can run through this nice dicer here quite easily and it makes this process a lot easier. We'll get you a link to this product right within our description here so you can find one of these yourself if you're interested. Those peppers are looking good. Once we get all those peppers nice and diced up, we do add that to the pot. All right, there they all are. Let's make sure we get all those peppers in there. Now we place this on the stove top a couple ticks above medium and we'll let this cook for 10 minutes after giving it a nice stir. If you like hot salsa, this is where you'd want to add in one to four chopped jalapenos into the mix. We are just not fans of the hot salsa. We'll stick with mild. Now we're gonna need one tablespoon of lime juice later on. So we're gonna actually take a moment here and juice this lime ourselves and get one tablespoon of lime juice. Whoa, hey, careful there. <laughs> Our daughters like to use this unit for making their lemonade, so we're trying it out for this. All right, we've got our lime juice done, so we've got that set aside for now, and we make sure we're stirring our pot occasionally for the full 10 minutes. Here's a great time to dice up some peaches. We're gonna need two cups of diced peaches, and this is generally about two or three peaches, depending on their size. Now, we've always loved salsa here, but we've only tried peach salsa for the first time, just a few years ago at our local favorite Mexican restaurant. Once we tasted it, we knew we needed to make this at home. And this is the one we've been making ever since. Man, those peaches are looking good. All right, we've got our two cups of diced peaches right there. And our pot on the stove has been going for 10 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in and stir that into the mixture. Oh, that looks like a perfect balance there. So now we're gonna cook this on medium for another five minutes right on the stove top. And we'll just keep this at a gentle simmer for five minutes, making sure to stir occasionally. And hey, <laughs> look at me. I'm not just a camera guy. I can also stir a pot. All right, let's get back to the brains of the operation here. As Julie gets the cilantro out, she's gonna mince up a half a tablespoon of cilantro and she uses her nice herb cutter here which we'll also link to in the description. But about 15 to 20 leaves of cilantro amounts to a half a tablespoon of minced cilantro. And you just keep working that cilantro down until you get some very fine pieces. All right, there's our half a tablespoon there, and you can see Julie pretty much nailed it. 
Nice job, dear. We're gonna set that cilantro aside with the lime juice. Now back to our pot on the stove top. This has been on medium for five minutes, so we're gonna drop it down to low for another three minutes. And once that's done, we're gonna take that over to our island and start adding in the rest of our ingredients. And we're gonna continue on here with a quarter cup of vinegar and pour that right into our pot. And we're gonna follow that up with two tablespoons of salt, just like that. After that, we're gonna add in that minced cilantro. Again, that's a half a tablespoon of minced cilantro. And then there's our lime juice. One tablespoon of lime juice. There it is. Ah, we got a little extra. We'll throw it all in. Then we're gonna go with half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and that goes into the pot as well. Perfect. Then we're gonna go with two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. And then we're gonna bring that directly over to our stove top again. Mix everything together. You wanna make sure that's nice and thoroughly stirred. And then we're gonna drop our temperature down to a low medium temperature. And we're gonna let this cook for 30 minutes. And again, it's a very good idea to stir that pot occasionally throughout that 30 minutes. And then after that 30 minutes is done, we can drop that temperature to low just to make sure to keep that warm while we prepare the gel. So for this, we grab one third of a cup of cold water, and then we mix that with a third of a cup of that clear gel. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you mix this nice and thoroughly until it becomes a nice thick mixture. And essentially what we're doing with this is we're just making that salsa just a little bit thicker in texture. That looks pretty good right there. So we'll bring that over to the stove top which is still sitting on low, and we're gonna mix in this clear gel and mix that into our salsa. And once we've got that thoroughly mixed in there, we're gonna to wanna to bring that burner temperature up to about medium, and we're gonna let that simmer for three minutes. And once that's done, we remove that from the stove top, and we're gonna add this into our jars right away. Now these jars are standard canning jars, which we got from Amazon. And we'll put a link to these as well in the description. But once the process is fully completed, these can be stored without refrigeration until they're opened up, which is certainly a wonderful benefit. Now before we add on the lids, it's a very good idea to wipe those tops clean so there's nothing sticking in there and causing that to be like a glue when you wanna go and open those jars. All right, let's get those first two lids on. Oops, careful. Let's get those first two lids on. You put that cap on first, and then you can just tighten those by hand. And again, just making sure those jars are nice and clean as you're adding on those lids. And here's our third and final jar that we're gonna be canning. There's a little bit more than three jars worth, so we're gonna be using this jar right away. And let me tell you, boy, it was tasty. Now as for these three jars that are gonna be canned, those go into our oven and we're gonna set the temperature at 225 degrees for 30 minutes. And 30 minutes later, all those microorganisms that lead to spoilage, they are all eliminated. Now we're gonna let these cool down to form that vacuum so we know these are airtight. You'll see those lids are up at the start, but after just a few minutes, the vacuum pulls those down so we know the jars are hermetic, which means they are safe for longer term storage. And make sure to check out this video right here for our homemade guacamole. Until next time, God bless.